blurbs and greetings. I've got a video, just a pretty simple one here about this little thing that doesn't even have a brand or a model name or anything. Well, it might have a model name right there, kind of. This is just really one of those AliExpress specials, <laughs> so to speak. And you see these on eBay as well and Amazon. I got this one on eBay. It was like 23 bucks shipped uh, from overseas. And yeah, they're probably just all made in the same place in China because, they, like I said, they don't have any real defining characteristics in terms of like uh, manufacturer or name. It's just like a generic little thing that seems to be made for industrial situations. Anyway, what it is is an interface card that uh, you have 8-bit ISA right there, and then you have a USB-A port right there. I think it's just 1.1 even. I don't even think it's USB 2. So you can plug in things like flash drives and uh, card readers and presumably like little hard drives or whatever. I just want to use it mainly to transfer files relatively quickly, easily um, on something like I got my IBM AT5170 PC right there from the 80s. And, you know, it's got an original Seagate hard disk in there, an MFM drive. And I don't have Compact Flash or anything installed in there, so I thought, hey, this would be kind of a cool alternative without having to whip out a Compact Flash solution and do anything like that. If this just works, that would be nice in terms of convenience for transferring over files and not having to write things to a floppy disk or do uh, networking or serial parallel transfers, any of that stuff. If I can just hot swap USB drives in and out with this, that, that would be awesome. You're supposed to be able to. Uh, it took a couple months to arrive, but hey, whatever. It was only like 23 bucks shipped, so it seemed like a pretty decent little deal. And um, yeah, I've been meaning to look at one of these for years. I was actually reminded about it by seeing someone else's video. I don't, I don't remember who it was. So it's got some jumpers on here for setting things like uh, uh, IRQ, like IO stuff. I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it default. See how that works. And it also has this spot here to plug in a startup, well, you know, like a BIOS chip. So you could flash that with presumably something like XT IDE and get that to go on startup, which that's pretty cool. You know, you could, uh, a lot of folks do that with networking cards and things that have a spot to plug in a chip like that, but it's totally optional, not needed at all. I'm not even gonna mess with that because I don't have much need for it right now. But uh, yeah, if you wanna get another ROM going, there it is. Pretty neat, a neat little thing, if, there, if it works as well as I hope it will. And this is like all it came with, it didn't come with any documentation, packaging really, it was just in the bubble wrap. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, actually it did come with a little mini CD, like one of those small burned CDRs. It's in the other room and I don't even know where it is anymore. I didn't really need it. It had some documentation, but it was all awful. Really all you needed was like, it looks like just one file to get it running in DOS. It's supposed to run on DOS 3.3 or higher. We'll see, that's what's on here. And uh, yeah, we'll just get this installed in the IBM AT, see if it works uh, and how well it works, what kind of speed we get. Um, I'm gonna try like hot plugging or whatever. That's really appealing, you know, cause with Compact Flash, you often have to uh, restart the computer if you wanna like take the card out, put it back in. It's a whole thing. It's kind of annoying. So we'll see just how it works. And I'm curious about compatibility with USB devices. And uh, I don't know, see if I can play a game straight off of here. I don't know if it's gonna be fast enough for that. We'll see, a lot of unknowns, but it was low cost enough. I figured, hey, I'll just try it out, see what happens. And you know, quick little blurb. All right, let's do this. Okay, IBM AT going here and I have the USB interface installed in one of the 16-bit ISA slots. So uh, this has been a bit of a learning experience trying to get this thing to work. And well, it turns out, it probably shouldn't be too surprising, that it is pretty particular with the type of USB stick, flash drive or whatever, or USB storage device that you plug into it. So um, I'm going to start up here. You'll see that right there, the driver for CH375 with the settings here. I'm actually just using the default settings because that's what worked best, honestly. it's uh, It works straight away with default settings. As long as you have a USB, flash, media, whatever interface you want to plug in there, whether it's a card reader or a flash drive or USB, the hard drive or something, 
it's got to be compatible with this and uh, I've tried so far five different USB devices and only one of them works. <laughs> so uh, anyway, it does work now. So here's what I get when I access the D drive, which automatically just seems to configure it to whatever the next drive letter is that isn't used. And in this case, I have A, B, and C used. And then it uh, assigns this D and there it is. And you'll notice there, it took a second to get a directory reading, but now it's fine. It pretty much just works as any other hard drive. So it's still a little weird though, like I said, in terms of getting it to work with uh, USB sticks or whatever you want to plug in there, because um, the one that's in there right now is a 256 meg, which this says it's like 500. I don't really know what's going on there. It's at FAT16, 256 megs. I mean, really, it's just the uh, the USB stick as it came from the factory. I didn't, I didn't even have to do anything to it. I just plugged it in and it worked. Um, and in fact, you can like hot swap it as well. Like I'm just gonna, oh, it's a little tight. So yeah, there's that 256 meg standard flash thing. Like I said, this is the only one that I can get to work. I've tried a one gig, a two gig, uh, 16 gig and all the way up to 256 gig. <laughs> just, just trying different things to see if like any of those would work at all with this. Yeah, obviously they're not gonna work just straight away because you have uh, file system restrictions to consider. So with all of those different sized flash drives, I was actually uh, partitioning them down to 256 megs just to be safe or whatever. You can go up to like 500. But yeah, I was basically wiping those clean partitioning them so it's only one partition on a larger USB stick down to 256 megs at FAT16, seeing if that would work. And it didn't work with any of them. So I thought that maybe it was the version of DOS because this had DOS version 3.3 on here, which is supposed to be fine. According to the readme and all the information I found about this ISA interface, it's supposed to work down to that version of DOS. Instead, all I got was this error with every single USB device and drive that I tried, didn't matter, it just gave me an error and it would not read. It would give me a directory reading, but it wouldn't actually load any files whatsoever. And also, this didn't work. Which I thought, what in the world? If it's not even working with like really low capacity, actual ones where I don't have to partition them down to a smaller size, it wouldn't even be working with this. So I thought, okay, maybe it's just the version of DOS. Upgraded to version, DOS version 6.2.2 is what I'm running here now. All of a sudden, this drive right here worked perfectly, didn't have to do anything else. None of the other drives though, the larger ones that I partitioned down to a smaller partition size with FAT16, those still don't work, even with 6.2.2. So it just seems that this interface is very picky about the drive you plug into it. However, if you get like a small capacity drive, like this is that, like the only one I still have, that is really uh, low in capacity. Yeah, it seems like it's gonna be okay. And I had to reach around there to get it plugged back in, but now that it is plugged back in, you'll see that it just starts reading it straight away. So yeah, you can hot swap all day long. It's fine, which is quite convenient. Uh, I don't even have that ability in a lot of like uh, the compact flash card readers and. SD card readers and things like that. Like a lot of them will freak out if you try to hot swap them. So you have to like, if you, if you do anything to the files um, on the actual drive and take it out, put it back in while the computer's still on, just doesn't know what to do with it. This one does on the other hand. So uh, it's quite nice. But yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that it just seems to be so picky. <laughs> Thankfully though, you know, getting it to actually, uh, to work, whoops. That's not gonna open anything. I'm trying to open config.sys. Right. Yeah, all you need to do to get it to work is just add this line right here to your config.sys file on startup. And it's just a device loading, point it to wherever the sys file is, ch375dos.sys. I just put it in the DOS folder. Um, that came on the little CD that was bundled with the card. And then, uh, yeah, 260, number seven, and percent one. 
those are just the default settings. I didn't change anything. So 260 and number seven are just address things. And then the percent one, I think that has to do with the speed. Apparently there's not too much of a difference anyway in terms of read write speeds. But uh, yeah, I just leave it on percent one and it's fine. And that gives you, I believe a speed of around 10 kilobytes per second, like nine or 10. It's, it's not fast at all. Let's just go into here. So this is, you know, about the size of a floppy disk, 1.2 megs or so. I'm gonna take this and put that over to the C drive. Let's see how long it takes. And uh, well, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> Cause like I said, the, uh, the speed that you get on here is, is somewhere around 10 kilobytes per second, at least the way this is configured. Um, so it doesn't really make sense if you're planning on using this to uh, quickly transfer a lot of stuff. But it does make sense if you just want something like on the fly for something that's relatively small. And you just uh, don't have anything else plugged in or whatever. You know, there, there's so many other options, of course. You've got serial and parallel transfers that are going to be faster than this. You've got... Uh, any number of other card interfaces, flash media things. You've got networking options and, you know, plugging in different peripherals and drives that are pretty much all going to be faster. You know, this is not unbearable, though. Like, for me, the way I've been using this is just whenever I wanted to just test out something on here really quick. Like, I put an EGA card in here. I wanted to test out World Class Leaderboard or Out of This World. And, um, you yeah, see, there you go. It took that long. You saw it in real time. So if I just like set up a bunch of things that I want to copy over on that USB and then just let it go in the background while I'm, I don't know, taking a dump or something, then that's fine. I'll just let it do in the background. It's, it's not a, a speed demon, but <laughs> it's not terrible either. In fact, that's not the right executable. Yeah. If you want to just load games and software straight off of there. It is a bit slow in terms of that initial loading, but for most things on a computer of this age, it's not too bad. It's actually pretty doable. Because, you know, we're not talking gigantic programs anyway, and this has uh, like 1.1 megs of RAM. So, you know, can load a lot of things just straight up into memory. Yeah, like I said, the initial load time's a little sucky. It's it's way slower than it should be. But once you get into games and stuff, as long as they're in memory and it's not loading a lot of stuff all the time, um, then it's perfectly playable. It's just like th these initial loads or anytime anything has to load anything. It, it depends on what you're running is what I'm trying to say. And yeah, this is going straight off of that USB flash drive. Slowly but surely. Neat, huh? I think it's neat. Like if it were any slower, this would <laughs> it would be unbearable. And it's not great even now, but uh, again, this is not really what this is made for. I don't think it's it just seems to be uh, a kind of neat other option for getting either smaller files transferred over really quickly without doing things like floppy disks or uh you know whatever if you just don't have anything else going or yeah just kind of setting it and forgetting it you know setting a batch copy file thing you know x copy or something like that if you want to get that going then you can and uh that's that's what i've been using it for main, mainly here is just copying over things in batches so uh, let's see what else Stupid Windows, always adding that dumb system volume information thing to removable drives. I've disabled that so many times in Windows and the registry and all these things. It just keeps coming back. So, get rid of that crap. Dang it. There we go. Anyway... Uh, that, that's pretty much it. There's really not much else at all to say, except that, uh, 
it kind of sucks. <laughs> But if, if you expect the suckage and you can find like a, a use case for this, I think it's pretty neat, you know? It, it's just not like, it's not gonna blow you away. Blow you away in terms of speed, that's, that's all. Um, it's still got its uses, I think. At least if you have a free slot. And I mean, I have have like three or four free slots in this particular machine, so. I figured why not? Especially since I don't have compact flash or networking or external drives or anything other than the two floppy drives. Right down there. That's the only way I've got to get data on and off of this IBM PCAT because I wanted to keep it relatively stock. Relatively. Is there, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Oh yeah, there was like a ton of other stuff on that CD as well that it came with, but like there's just, it's just all kinds of different drivers and software and operating system versions and documentations and executables. And a lot of it completely redundant. Like I said, all you need was that one sys file to load on startup and that one line in your startup file for config.sys. That was it. So you can fit it all easily on a single floppy of pretty much any capacity. So that was very easy to copy over. Ooh, a bit of a hook. Looks like he hit the tree, Jim. And by a bit of, I mean a nasty one. Good grief. <laughs> the crickets. They just, oh no, 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 that's not what I meant. Looks like he hit the tree, Jim. Sure did, Jim. Okay, that was the wrong. <laughs> the wrong club entirely. Whatever, whatever. It's fine. Anyway, this card, it works. Let's get out of here and get back to DOS. Uh, it's pretty neat, I think. And that's about all I got to say. Thanks for watching this blurb. Mm.